everyone. Welcome to ATS Week again. I know you've probably heard that many times now, but I cannot welcome you enough. We're so excited about this week and we've all enjoyed recording for you. Today, I want to talk about uh, things like meditation, getting in your zone, uh, what do you want to do, who are you, things like that. What helped me get there was the concept of the vortex. I get that from Abraham Hicks, of course. If you've listened to anything her, you hear her say that a lot. The vortex is where you cease to think about things that you don't want. If you don't want it, you don't think about it. Because when you think about it, you welcome it. She tells us that there is no exclusion. There's only inclusion. And so whether you think about what you do want or whether you think about what you don't want, all of that will be included. Whether you think about what you do want or whether you think about what you don't want, all of that will be included. And so you do this thing where you only think about what it is you do want. And when you only strive to think about what it is you do want, you'll end up in the vortex. And the vortex is a space where you are only thinking about what you do want. And if you've ever experienced it, this is what it feels like. You feel like you can accomplish anything. You, you get in your zone. You get things done for your dreams. You get things done for your vision. You get things done for your pockets and not for everybody around you. So how do you do that, Shannon? How do you get in this place, this vortex? Sometimes it happens and you're not even trying to get there. If you've ever felt like you had a surge of energy, man, all of a sudden I just came to this place where I, I went ahead and, and trademarked my business. Uh, today I opened up a business account. Today I, I opened up my LLC and it came out of nowhere. That's Vortex. You were void of anything, thinking about anything that you didn't want. You were caught in, in, in a vibration where you were only thinking about what you wanted and you acted upon it in that state. You cannot accomplish anything trying to do it outside of the vortex. You cannot accomplish it trying to do it outside of the vortex. What happens when you strive, or as Abraham says, when you effort outside of the vortex, you end up coming against extreme opposition and extreme resistance. And it's you versus you. Not from anybody else. It's you fighting against you because there is a you that wants to remain unsuccessful. There is a you that wants to remain comfortable. There is a you that wants to stay in this present state of not doing anything that you want to do. And then there is a source you. There is a you vibrating at a higher level. There is a you that is the millionaire. There is a you that is the entrepreneur. There is a you that is whatever it is you want to be. And those two yous are fighting against one another. And so when you're not in the vortex and you're trying to do vortex things, not only will you not get them accomplished, you'll be frustrated, you'll be overwhelmed, you'll be in a state of what am I doing and why, you're, you'll be in a state of who am I? And so before you can effort, before you can try to get done what it is you feel you need to get done, you need to strive to be in the vortex. So how? One way is meditation. You hear this a lot, but I know that it is a hard thing to practice. My grandfather told me, Anything worth having is worth fighting for and working for. If you're not fighting for it, if you're not working for it, if you're not willing to consistently devote 15 minutes a morning to get it, you don't deserve it. Meditation is very, 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 very important. Very, <clears throat> very important. Because when you meditate, you quiet your mind. If you've ever practiced meditation, it's a practice of quieting your mind. When you meditate, you quiet your mind. Once your mind is quiet, once your mind is quiet, you stop thinking. If anyone has practiced meditation, even with my speech slowing down right now, your thoughts have just slowed down. 
because my voice is slow. My cadence is slow. But you're looking for the next thing that I'm going to say, and so your thoughts have slowed down. You meditate, you quiet your mind, you still your thoughts, you stop thinking, and when you stop thinking, you cease to resist because you're not thinking about anything that requires resistance. That's why meditation is so important because you quiet your mind, you stop your thoughts, and when you stop your thoughts, you stop resistance. I'm sorry if I, you're distracted. There's a fly. There's a fly, <laughs> and my natural instinct is just to maneuver it and to get it away. But um, meditation. And that's why meditation is important because that happens when you meditate. A fly may come. You may hear a noise. It may interrupt your quiet mind. And what you have to do is just begin again. And that's the hardest thing. That's why people give up on meditation so much. Is because just the process of quieting your mind takes practice. I couldn't sit for five minutes without thinking about something. My thoughts would automatically drift. That's why some meditation practices require you to listen to a tone or to repeat a mantra. That's not so you can just devote yourself to that mantra. It's so that you could quiet your mind. You're drowning out thought with a tone or you're driving out thought with the mantra. That's how you get into the vortex. Because when you cease, stop thinking, and when you stop resistance, you have opened up yourself to enter the vibration of who you really are. There's a vibration of you that you're not in tune with all the time. There's a vibration of you that you felt when you opened that LLC, when, when you trademarked that business, when you came up with that wonderful business idea. You felt that but you also have to admit that you don't always feel it. When you meditate, you open yourself up to feel that all the time. Because right after you finish meditating, you go into your work day. And after quieting your mind and after um, stopping your thought and after stopping resistance, you have no other choice but to enter the vibration of who you really are because there's nothing blocking you from getting there. The reason why we don't meditate is we're comfortable with the clouds. We're comfortable with the, the, the muddy waters. We're comfort, comfortable with the unsurety, the uncertainty. We're comfortable with saying, I really want to do this, but. You don't resist the but, you welcome the but because that keeps you from having to become who you know you are and who you really want to be because that requires work. That requires sacrifice. But if you are to enter the vortex and if you are to get in your zone and if you are to become and operate in and get close to the vibration, if you are to become who it is you wanna become, if you are to be successful, if you are to get to the vibration of who you really are and operate within that vibration, you have to be willing to do things differently. You have to be willing to do things consistently. And you have to be okay with being amongst the 1% than the 99%. There are 1% to 5% of people doing what you want to do. There's 95 to 99% of people doing what you're doing. 99 to 95% of the people have no idea what a vortex is and could care less about what I'm talking about right now. But you're here because you care. You're here because you want to be the highest version of yourself. And the only way you get to the higher version of you is to learn how to stop the resistance coming from the lowest version of you. And the only way you do that is by practicing to get in the vortex. Practicing to find and get in tune with the source you. The, you, the, the highest version of yourself. You have to remember, and Abraham says it all the time, a belief is a thought that you just keep thinking. 
A belief is a thought that you keep thinking. A belief is a thought that you keep thinking. The reason why you are where you are today is because you kept thinking yourself here. And you believe that that's where you're supposed to be. May not be where you want to be, but you thought yourself there. Now, in order to get to where you're going, you have to change your thoughts. And you have to realize that changing your thoughts is not an easy thing to do. One of the best lessons that Antonio taught me was to give myself permission to be where I am. Give myself permission to be who I am. And in that permission, also permit myself to get to where I'm trying to go. Also permit myself to do the work. Also permit myself to do things differently because doing them the same would keep me where I was. The only way you get to the vortex, the only way you get to the highest version of yourself is to do things differently. Stop listening and do. I know we've all heard the phrase, it goes in one ear and out the other. In one ear, out the other. I kind of did that backwards. Meaning that it doesn't stop here. Let who you are, let what you want, let your success stop here. Think about it. Change your thoughts. There, you hear it all the time. Bryant just did a lesson on it about a week ago. Change your thoughts, change your life. You quit on it because it's not an easy thing to do. But how much time have you spent quitting on what was hard in order to embrace what is easy? What I've learned is poverty is easy to achieve, but it is murderous to exist in every day. Living in a world of what I have to accept that isn't what I want is hard. Watching your children live in it is even harder. Knowing that it's your fault because you lack the consistency to do the work, that's detrimental. You are not lazy. You are not meant to be unsuccessful. You are not meant to be where you are right now other than sitting in front of your computer, your television, or your phone listening to us. But you have to take it a step further. You have to do the work. Say you don't have time to meditate to get into the vortex. There's other things you can do. You can take a walk or a run or a bike ride outside in nature. Nature sounds drown out your thinking. Nature sounds quiet your mind. If you've ever noticed when you're outside and you're, and you're absorbing nature, you go from thinking about the mundane to thinking about how beautiful the water is or dang, look how beautiful the sky is or look how beautiful this or that. You're observing nature. At that point, you're no longer thinking about the mundane. How many, how many of you can relate to getting some of your best ideas when you're driving? Why do you think that is? Your eyes are open to clouds. Your eyes are open to trees. Your eyes are open to the earth. That's a way to get into the vortex. Another way, sit down and begin to write every single thing you can think about to be grateful for. Don't stop. Do it for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Eventually, you will reach a heightened level of yourself because you are being extremely grateful. Gratitude is a way to enter the vortex. Because you're not thinking about selfishness. You're not thinking about poverty. You're thinking about how grateful you are about things. That's a way to get there. And then once you enter it, once you get to the point where you realize you're not thinking about anything you don't want, you get to work on what you do want. You get to work on your success. You get to work on your goals. You get to work on your dreams because the only place that your effort will pay off for you is when you're in the vortex. 
So if I could leave you with anything, I will tell you, efforting, trying, doing, when you're not in the vortex, you're going to come up against supreme resistance. And it's going to be you against you. If you do the work to get into the vortex, and all the vortex is, is a space in your mind where you are not thinking about anything you don't want. When you get into the vortex, you will move forward. When you get into the vortex, you will work supremely on your success. But you have to do the work. You've heard the saying, nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. Your goals can't stay dreams. Dreams die. Goals don't if you work in them. Dreams die unless you birth them into actuality. There's a lot of dreams laying waste inside of people. A lot of dreams that have gone into the grave. I don't want that to be you. I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be my son. And so I do the work the best way that I can I don't effort when I know I'm not in the vortex. When I know I've had a day of stinking thinking, when I know I've had a, a night of stinking thinking, the first thing I do is self-development because I know that nothing is gonna get accomplished with me in that headspace. And so I listen to my videos, I read my books, I read my affirmations and I get myself into the vortex and then I do my best work. It's worked for me I hope that it worked for you. I've enjoyed talking to you about this subject. Reach out to me if you need more clarification. You can reach me via any way that you reach Antonio. So um, thank you. You can plant better. You can dominate. See you later. everyone welcome to plant better university my name is tempest and i want to thank you as always for being part of our community um, allowing us to pour into you and investing in yourself and investing in us so we can give you everything that we have um, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you there would be no plant better university no um, people who plant better community on facebook and around the world or an ATSJR companies. Um, there are thousands and thousands of personal development and consulting companies um, around the world. And the fact that you have chosen us to pour into you, to pour into your lives, to pour into your business, or to help you grow to the next level, personal or uh, professionally, that means the world to us. So thank you for allowing us to come into your homes to come on your devices and um, allowing us to train you um, to plant better into your lives that does mean a lot so thank you for choosing us um, i want to talk to you today about charging your worth and what brought this up um <laughs> at this time at this recording two major superstars um, announced a joint tour and pre-sale tickets are on sale I believe and people are going crazy so if you don't know I'm speaking of um, Beyonce and Jay-Z and they're on the run to tour um, I saw that people were complaining about the prices and the timing of the release of the tickets um, so let's talk about both and I'm only going to use them as an example for today. Um, so let's talk about both. Let's talk about the prices first of all. Um, I don't know about you but Beyonce is an international um, multi-platinum Grammy award winning artist as is her husband Jay-Z. So I'm confused and concerned that there are so many people 
who are complaining about their ticket prices and how does that apply to you as a person um, as an individual just living your life or how does that apply to you as a business owner as a person how does this apply to you you have to know your worth Um, Beyonce and Jay-Z know that they produce hits they produce um, number one records I mean Lemonade has been the talk of the land since day one um since the day it came out um jay-z recently released 444 and it's also been talk of course they have some controversy going on but i'm saying this as an individual maybe you're not a business owner so i'm talking to you just you know not in a mean way but to your everyday person how how do their ticket prices um why, why should I care? You should care because you should know your worth and you should know what you're worthy of and you should know how valuable you are. What does that mean? That means you don't allow um, people to talk to you any kind of way. That means you don't allow yourself to mistreat you. You don't allow others to mistreat you. That means you um, monitor what you put into your brain that means you monitor what you listen to what you um watch on tv if you watch tv um you monitor how you pour into your family um, how you pour into your significant other your spouse your kids um you monitor you know what you will and will not accept there are certain things there are certain lines that people have that everyone like you're not going to push this but you're not going to cross this line those of us who have kids i don't have kids yet but i'm seeing parents who are so sweet and quiet um go on a complete 180 when it comes to their kids or when it comes to their spouse or significant other so you individual non-business owner and nothing's wrong with that know your worth Beyonce is not giving discounts there's a meme floating around social media you know know your worth and add text know your worth and then add text know know that know what you will and will not stand for know what you will and will not tolerate and don't accept anything less there is nothing wrong and i know this is going against popularity stands there's nothing wrong with having standards there's nothing wrong with having high standards um if they can't reach them then that's not they're not for you unless you're willing to lower them and make adjustments have standards for yourself you know if you require certain things and that makes you happy and that makes you who you are then if that's your worth then that's your worth so know your worth business owners i know we get um pricing is a sensitive subject when it comes to our products and our services Charge your worth for you too. Charge your worth for your products. How much time, effort, and energy did you put into creating this product, creating this book, um, providing this service? Um, what what is the value of it? What do excuse me? What do people um, get in return? I had a good friend of mine, Mark Davenport, say, "Look at um, what people are doing in your industry. Take the." highest amount and then look and take the lowest amount and then you go somewhere in the middle but make sure your middle is worthy of you so that means you're gonna have to do some research that means you're gonna have to um you're gonna have to hit the books you're gonna have to hit google but at the end of the day you know what your product is worth you know how much energy and effort and information and research and late nights and early mornings you put into your product make sure you charge your worth and if they talk about you guess what people are talking about beyonce and jay-z ticket sales but they're still buying them and they will buy from you too 
So don't be afraid to charge your work because if you charge too low, people are going to think, oh, this is a knockoff. This is some bootleg. This is something that I don't need. And if if you charge too much, they still may charge. They still may buy. They still talk about you, but they may buy. Take, for instance, um, red bottoms. I think they are extremely overpriced. But how many people do you see walking around with red bottoms that probably cannot afford them um, because people want to be seen and people should be seen with your products with your services and charge your work there's nothing wrong with that um, uh, regardless of the price um, people are still showing up people are still buying people are still going into debt and the second thing that I brought up was people were complaining about the timing um, the timing of the announcement of the tour and the announcement of the pre-sale and general sales um, <laughs> on social media people are saying that they purposely um, release tickets during the income tax refund time because they know that people are you know more than likely um, are getting a refund and that's probably the time that th- that's probably the only time that they'll have extra cash so to speak to be able to afford it look if you don't know your audience don't be mad at Jay-Z and Beyonce for being strategic with theirs okay you if you're if you know that your audience or your ideal audience so you know you can make more bang for your buck during a certain season then you should jump on board if you don't have specials for income tax then are you paying attention you know there are holidays antonio loves to say this all the time there's always some kind of holiday or special day every month of the year in january is new year's and february is valentine's um march is spring break um april is usually easter may is mother's day june is um, father's day and graduation july is fourth of july august is um back to school september is labor day october is halloween november is thanksgiving and then december you have your hanukkah your kwanzaa and christmas and then we're back in january there's always a time there's always some energy that you can hop on um place your place your products for sale during those those busy seasons maybe you have nothing to do with valentine's day but love yourself enough to a coaching session love your business enough to a free consulting consultation um just think outside the box but the way is made the energy is out there and please don't be mad at jay-z and beyonce for recognizing that this is the time of year that people get excited about getting an income tax refund and they strategically um release the tickets um during this time they are being smart and so should you so pay attention to the seasons pay attention to what people are spending money on and how they spend money and where they spend money um you know u.s census is a great resource for that and other um, sources on their website and just pay attention but regardless of paying attention charge your worth be like beyonce and jay-z whether you like them or not you have to respect the fact that they know their audience they know when their audience has money and they know how to sell out a stadium and if beyonce and jay-z can do it so can you thank you again for watching plant better university we'll talk to you soon bye-bye You know, like Shark Week is a big deal. Oh, okay. Shark I get it now. Deal. Take me blonde hair. Really it's okay. okay. It's okay. It's so, okay. Ta- so who is who? Uh, Who's going to be from ATS? I, well, okay. ATS, Antonio T's going to do it. Okay. Yeah. He's going to do 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Not just him, though. No. Who? Not just him. You got Timber Smith. You got Deanna Mitchell. You got Brian Johnson. Are Brian you going to be Johnson. Are you? I think I am, too. Okay. Aren't you? So... Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And then we got Shannon Clark.
Yes. Shannon Clark. Shannon Clark. Okay. Shannon okay. Clark. Okay. Damn. All these people. Did you say too. Diana? I said Diana. Yeah, okay. We say Diana. 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 Okay. Yes. Rainbows. Rainbows. She's gonna shoot rainbows yes. through yes. your screen, yes. everybody. That's it. Yes. Okay. So I'm excited. Yes. Twenty four hours a day, seven days. That's it. You July sixteenth. I bet you. Twenty third. We were. <laughs> That's my jam. Okay, so let's do a little housekeeping first so everybody have checked in. We do have the live feed going for all of you, so that is great pictures. We got some people coming in. I actually saw them pulling up, so get ready to receive them. A few things, so if you want to take notes, <clears throat> that's great. If you want to, if you want to have the video, you can get the video today for 150 bucks. You understand how that works. If not, then it's 250 bucks. You understand how that works. If you don't, secure it today. That is good. Everything is good. Also, use the hashtag born to win. ATS? Is that what? Or is it just okay? Born to win ATS. Or born to win. You can just use born to win. Use the hashtag born to win. That will work. And I don't think I have it. Oh, if, if you see Mr. Brown in the hallways. Try to let him. Nah, it's a joke. That's, <laughs> you, you have to be with us. We, we travel with Les Brown all the time. And that's the last thing they always say <laughs> as well. So I had to do that there. Good. I have to go to do another keynote. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. I didn't try to double book myself. They scheduled me without scheduling me. And so I'm going to go there and then come back. So I'll be over there at 115. That means I'm gonna have all my stuff at the front end. Okay, so you're gonna, yes, yes, you're gonna have four different keynotes back to back. We're not leaving till 12, so please get thine fatty foods in the back that Harold Jackson will have to run off you. Yes, yes, yes. Free plug for him, he has a gym that all of you need to be members of. Yes, yes, yes. He's also one of the sponsors of this conference, and him and his lovely wife are here in attendance. King and Queen Jackson. Yes, yes, give us love. Yes, yes, yes. For information about them, we will drop this here in the feed so you guys can have that down there. So somebody take care of that for me. Join, join, join. That's what you should do. Does that make some sense? All right, I'm sure you didn't mind no free advertisement. <laughs> I'll take it any day. I'll take it any day. As well, we have a lot of uh, all of you are here. We good. Good to see Pastor Paul here as well. He's always a good thing. Ain't, ain't always looking good. He's always looking good. He's always looking good. All right, and then the Queen and walked in here. She has a conference going on. Yes, yes, yes. All right. All right. Let's get started. So four different things. This is a financial conference. If you don't know anything about me, I'll tell you about me in a second. But let me tell you about this conference first. About seventy-five percent of this conference. It's literally about finances, all right? Literally, all right? That that you, I don't know if you've ever been to a financial conference. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. It's normally about yes. It's only about thirty-five percent, and then they upsell you. That's the way. That's not what we're doing here. It's about seventy-five percent, and then we're gonna have some people tell their stories as well in between. We're gonna take. So I'm gonna do an hour. Then we have some music as if I walked away. And then an hour again, same thing. And then an hour again. Same thing, and then an hour again. Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to talk about the law of money, and we're going to talk about the law of wealth creation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a little bit about me. Antonio T. Smith, Jr., that is my name. I grew up homeless for many years, and I'm thankful that I did because I actually get to have more opportunities than many of you because when you have been coddled and spoiled, you don't know how to create a way for yourself. That is something I'm very thankful for, that if you take everything from me right now, I won't even stress because if I got it once, I know how to get it again. I understand the principles of creating things that I want. 
I never stress about my reality. I create my reality. And I'm going to teach you that from a financial standpoint on this day. Let me pause right there. Let me just tell you that don't just take what I just said as a cliche. I promise you nothing I said is a cliche. So I'll rewind and maybe you can catch it again this time. You can create your own income and your own income reality. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to put yourself in a homeless mind state. Wonderful story I love to tell about a leopard that must eat in the jungle. Am I, is my zipper zipped in? Is that, there we go, on camera, there we go. She said me my zipper was unzipped. Why is you looking? No, I'm just joking. I just joking. I just joking. I just joking. I just joking. That's why right. we gonna keep all that too on the video too. All that is gonna be on the video. I'm not gonna edit it out. I'm gonna put it on the official video. She's gonna see it. Listen, my tummy stops my zipper from zipping on the tummy. You understand? You know. But I'm losing that though. I've lost five pounds the last week. Yes. Yeah. I had to run a lot for that because at this point cardio is a must. <laughs> Cardio is a buzz. A leopard has to eat. And this is important because leopards very fast. It's in the, in the jungle very, very fast. The problem with being very fast is if you're not careful, you rely on your strengths. If you rely on your strengths, which you should, then you get cocky. Winning has never taught me anything. Losing has taught me everything. Mm -hmm. The only thing winning has ever taught me is how to be arrogant and how to be comfortable. And so if you continue to only rely just on your strengths, which you should double down on them, but if you try to learn from winning, you'll never learn anything. So what the leopard must do in order to eat the impala is the leopard must conceal themselves and put themselves into the right position to where there's strength versus strength. Right. If the leopard does not get the impala, the leopard starves for a week. Why is this important for you? Because you need to start acting like the leopard. You kill the impala or you starve. 90% of leopard cubs do not make it past their second birthdays. 90% of leopard cubs do not make it past their second birthdays. It's a scientific fact. Because if you don't eat, you don't live. And unfortunately, you're not treating your money that way. Unfortunately, you are not treating your money as if this is what I have. And if I don't keep it, I die. Most people take all your money and you eat all your harvest. That makes absolutely zero sense. It makes no sense to be a farmer to plant seeds, wait for the harvest, and then devour the entire harvest that comes to you. So please understand that what I'm getting ready to teach you is the reason why you treat your money that way is because you have been bamboozled to operate in a false system and you think lack exists. Lack does not exist. It is a lie that has been told to you. It is a lie that you immediately need to separate yourself from as fast as possible. Here's how you know if lack exists in your mind. If you spend money and say, ooh, I shouldn't get that. Uh -oh. <clears throat> lack is prevalent in your mind. I'm not talking about being frivolous with your money. We're not talking about being absolutely insane with it. We're saying when you say, I don't have enough money for this, I better make sure I have enough for rent. You are operating under the fact that lack exists, and that is why you have lack. Your dominant thoughts are lack. Think about it this way. If you were to, if I were to ask you, now, as I do it all the time, I'm going to test you. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to test you. This is a test. You are going to fail. I am going to tell you that this is a test. And as I'm telling you that this is a test, you are going to fail. All of you. Uh oh will be millionaires. Like, I got that part. Yeah, right. In two hours. Now think about that. <laughs> Look at the reaction you just had in your mind. Think about that for a second. You was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to be a millionaire. But when I put a time limit on it, your dominant thoughts kicked in. And that's exactly why you have what you have. Because you, you, you're, you talk away 
but your mental talk is what actually exists in your reality. So if you think two hours is not enough to get a million dollars, then you have, you're operating under the system of lack. Because there are people making a hundred million dollars in two hours. Consistently, yeah. statistically, 1,700 millionaires are created in America a day. <laughs> to be honest with you, millionaires are new middle class. Come on. I don't even <laughs> consider, don't uh -oh. even consider million dollars rich anymore. <laughs> if you get a million dollars and you spend a dime, you're no longer a millionaire. Millionaire is the new middle class. Period. That's not changing. I personally have a goal for the next 363 days is to, not a billion, three million dollars is what I'm going for in the next, yes, 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 thank you. Three million dollars. I absolutely believe it. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely something very believable for me. It's not something that is a stretch for me, but it is a bit of a stretch. We got to work. That's $8,300 a day. Every day I sit down, I say, somebody owes me $8,300. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> now ask yourself, are you approaching your days in that manner? Come on now. Do you even know, 90% of if you walk out there right now, you say, hey, what is your goal financially mm. for the rest of this year? They're going to tell you some vague answer. I don't know. And vagueness, if you, if you have vague in your mind, you have vague in your life. Uh-oh. Mm. Jesus. Oh, wow. And so what we need to understand is how you do anything is how you do everything. I did a group assignment not too long ago, and I had these professionals do this group. And I said, you got two minutes. You got two minutes to do this exercise of the word hope. It's group assignments. And how many of us don't like group assignments at all? Come on, you can go ahead and admit it. You, you understand. You remember in high school, the group, okay, it got, she got five hands back there on one body that came up. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay, and so we don't like group assignments. But how you do anything is how you do everything. So the people, I watched the dynamics of the group, they thought that when they performed the group exercise, that was the point of the group. That was not the point. The point of the group exercise was for me to show them how you do anything is how you do everything. So there were people in the back of the group clicking together, talking about the people who were trying to take charge. Those people show up at your church and do the same thing. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. Then there were other people. Yeah, this is going to get worse. <laughs> then there were other. And this is just my introduction to part one. This, <laughs> there were other people who then cowered in the back to lose themselves because they were too afraid to say something mm -hmm. so others would not be offended by their strength. Mm. These people show up in your marriages in the same way. Oh. However you do anything is how you do everything. So if you're doing something very little, how you're doing it is how you do everything. Now, imagine your financial situation. It doesn't matter. How you're approaching your finances is how you approach everything. It's very hard to be in overdraft and to be having an overflow spirit. It's hard. It's, it's near impossible. It is. We do it, but what happens if you're in are y'all ready? Because I'm, I'm, it's fitting your words. If you're in overdraft physically, but your spirit is always in overflow, you aren't the problem. The people around you are. Because you can only have in this reality what you manifested in your mind. And the people in your life are just as worse as the food you put in your body. And this, this is a scientific fact. So if you are always jovial, but your finances are not. The people in your life are sucking all the life out of you. And it's showing up in your financial situation. Does that make sense? It'll show up in your health. But if you're great and healthy, what your finances are, you got people just draining everything from you. They got this thing called sapiosexual. <laughs> That's when you love an intellectual conversation. That's like sex for you. That is something that we all need to be doing daily. But however, if we do not have the capacity to have intellectual conversation, then what happens is we also are not having intellectual conversations about money. Everybody's talking about money. Everybody's just not talking about it the same. 
Let's see if you heard some poverty lack statements. Money don't grow on trees. Anybody by show of hands, anybody heard that one? Uh oh. You think I am Rockefeller? Anybody heard that one? Oh, oh, what about this one? I love this one. When we go in the store, you better not ask for nothing. Nothing. Anybody, anybody had? Yeah. <laughs> don't touch nothing. Don't, don't touch that. Don't, don't ask for nothing. You, ain't <laughs> you understand? Did they give me that? It's cold in my face. Look, you know, <laughs> you know as if, like a, a whole cold breeze just hit my face. You know, you gotta look like that. And all of this is lack. It's a lie. Let me tell you why this is a lie. It is a lie that you believe in lack. It is not true because nature does nothing in lack. Mm -hmm. Let's do this from just straight observational information that you already have. You've never had a poor rain cloud. <laughs> it's never happened. You, you've never, you, it never rained in you and the rain cloud was depressed and was like, you know what, I just, I just here, just take this. When it rains, it rains in abundance. In truth, all fresh water on planet Earth comes from one place, rain. It comes from no, it's not magically coming from the ground. If any groundwater that is fresh came from the rain, the rain is always in the money. Let's take it out of something that is life-giving. Let's take it to something that takes life. The AIDS virus. The AIDS virus is a virus that multiplies itself in abundance. Watch it. There's nothing that life would ever do that would do it in lack. Mm. Whether you're giving life or taking life, whether it's natural or not, if it's natural, it will always be in abundance. Mm. I prove it to you again. Let's, let's all of us picture a banana tree. <clears throat> picture, picture a, actually, let, let's picture an orange tree. Thank you. Picture an orange tree. You. you like oranges. Yeah. Okay, I saw your face. I yeah, felt you. Thank, thank all right, you. All right, there we go. There you go. <laughs> you, you, you shot a signal to yes. me and said, let's go ahead. Okay, so let's picture an orange tree just for a second. All right. Does an orange tree have one orange on it? Now think about this for a second. You expect the orange tree to have a bunch of oranges on it. Does that make sense? Now watch this here because nature is real funny about things. Nature does what you call the principle of multiplication. Okay. So inside each orange is a multiplication of seeds. Come on now. In order to get the one Orange tree, you only need one seed. Okay, okay. I'm trying to show you how nature does nothing in life. Mm -hmm. To get one seed, put it into the ground, gives you a tree with hundreds of oranges with, a bunch of seeds. with thousands of seeds. <laughs> it's the principle of multiplication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is why old folks say if they're religious, you can't be God's given. Come on. It's because God sends to work in great multiplication. Yeah. Let's take it out of God. The ground works in great multiplication. Yeah. Yeah. When you put it into it, it gives you back. If you're planting one seed of corn, you get back an ear. Does that make sense? Yeah. Finance is working the same way, and we'll cover that in great detail. But here is why you've been lied to. You have started being charged for the orange tree. <laughs> it's free. Oh, wow. <laughs> Think about this for a second. Who said, you know what, this hey, this is free over here. I tell you what, it's mine now. We're going to charge for it. And this is why you've been lying to me, because the moment we do that, we put lack on it. The moment we do something, we put lack on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, hear me well. The moment we do something, we put lack on it. The moment I want it, I am the winner. I establish the rules. And winners establish the rules, and the rules made by winners are always going to benefit the winners and keep the losers in their place. I promise you I'm talking all about finances. I'm, I'm going I'm to get to, to, to this first law, but I'm trying to show you that everything I'm talking about is not opinionated. It is nature's law. Straight, objective things that we need to understand. If I win, I create rules to sustain my winning and to keep you in your losing. So if you are following rules, you are in poverty. Because the rules are only put there to keep you in your poverty mindset, to keep you in your poverty place. But watch it. I can't let all of you lose all the time. So I'll let a few of you in so it looks like I'm fair. Wow. Mm. 
I'm, 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 if you didn't want to be woke, you gave the wrong place, okay? <laughs> yeah. like but but, but you, you know the system is broken Come on. when I always have you losing. But if I let a few of you get a master's, I almost made this a, a different kind of keynote. If I <laughs> if I let a few of you <laughs> if I let a few of you get in. If I let a few of you get in. I, yeah, I, almost, I almost made a different kind of keynote. Come <laughs> on. If I let a few of you get in, then you say, Oh, life if you be careful, corporations will always pay you just enough not to revolt, but never enough to be rich. They, they, they give you just enough not to start a revolution. Yeah, yeah. But never yeah. give you enough to supplant them. So please understand this here. This life, this world as you know it, you're trapped in the matrix. Whether you like the movie or not, it is the truth. It's not going anywhere. Here's what you need to understand. It benefits three elements. Write these three elements down, please. Governments, corporations, and the filthy rich. Uh oh. Sound like that's I it. Doctor Claude, right now. That's it. Come on. Now. Governments, corporations, and the filthy rich. Okay, just 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 tune in on the uh, feed so you don't crash while you're watching this live. Don't don't, don't crash. She's going to get her hat done. So when she come back, she's going to be even better than good looking than what she is right now. <laughs> <laughs> corporations, governments. Filthy rich people. I prove it. Don't worry about it. Here we go. If uh, if we have an oil spill, we're on an island right now. <clears throat> Gulf of Mexico, sitting there. If a major company that I won't name because I'm you gonna sponsor me, you gonna sponsor me real soon as I won't name you. If a country, if a company gets a massive oil spill right now, uh -huh. who pays for that cleanup? Exactly. The government. Not the who pays the government. So who does it always come back to? Us. Period. It's not changing. It's, it's not changing. Mm -hmm. And they'll get a tax break mm -hmm. because the rules mm -hmm. are written by the winners. The rules. Okay. They, they are rules. They are rules. If you don't know what a rule is, I invite you to read <coughs> the Code of the Extraordinary. <coughs> Excuse me. Code of the Extraordinary, Code of Extraordinary Mind by Vishen Lakiani. Great book. Mm -hmm. Rules mean BS rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what BS stands for, don't you? Am I still in the, like in the regular yeah. world? Okay, yeah. all right. All right, so that's what it's benefiting. So let's go back to this orange tree. Listen, hey, here's this orange tree. It's naturally in abundance. Mm -hmm. Here's what we do as winners <laughs> to abundance, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? First off, you need a permit to get to this tree. <laughs> <laughs> you need the government to tell you. As a matter of fact, too many people getting permits. <laughs> Let's control the flow of who getting permits. Of who getting permits. <laughs> uh oh. Too many people not looking like what I like them to look like. Yeah. yeah. They got it's getting them. permits. Uh -huh. So let's just control the flow of the flow. Uh -huh. Am I describing your world to you? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Now that you got it, all right. This is what you do. Now that you got a permit, you qualify for this orange. Mm -hmm. This. This one here, just just this one, but it's all these. Uh, what about all the mornings? This is the orange you get. Mm -hmm. What about my family? Split that orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so not lying. I'm not, I'm just, this is right. It is an illustration, but I am not lying. You split this orange. I got family of six. Split it six ways. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Make it work. So when we take something. We don't give it abundance. We put rules on it and create the illusion of lack. Mm -hmm. There is no lack. And the moment you keep thinking lack is the moment you fall in those rules. Yep. And if you fall in those rules, you automatically put yourself on the road to poverty. Yep. And you yep. can't have riches on the road to poverty. It's, it's, not, it's not that you're a bad person. It's just that you're on the wrong road. It's not that you don't understand. You're just on the wrong road. You're on the road that is meant to keep you poor. So you can never be in prosperity. So write these three down. There are three different ways. Write these three things down. There are three different ways to make money. Three different ways. I don't have fancy names for them. 
I just call them level one, two, and three. Okay? Mm. Level one, trade time for money. Very important. <clears throat> trade time for money. I am now going over to you the exact laws of how to make money. Trade time for money. Everybody got it? <clears throat> Take time for money. Trade. trade time for money. That means get a job. <clears throat> they tell you what you make. Yep. You're going to do this on this time. Yep. Here's your check. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Level two is you invest money. You have money. Become your soldiers that recruit other soldiers. Or you let your money get pregnant and have babies, however you want to say it. It's the same thing. All right? It's, it's the same thing. Your money recruits more money. Right. Does that make sense? Level three, multiple streams of income. Now, Let's start with level three. Everybody on level three who has multiple streams of income always also do what is level two and never do what is in level one. Okay. What's level three? Multiple streams of income. What's level two? Yes. What's level one? Trade time for money. People on level three will die before they go trade time for money. Yeah. Does that make sense? I would you just I I would lose everything, be talked about, become a public embarrassment, and be under a bridge before I ever go get a job. I just never do it. I just can't. Mm -mm, I can't do it. Now, if you're starting off college, you need to get you a high paying job as fast as possible, so you can pay your way into level two. Invest your way into level three. Make sense? I'm not saying jobs are bad. I'm just saying jobs will never create you wealth. You have to create wealth with the income from that job. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the vehicles of making money. Here are the only two methods of making money, which I will cover here shortly in great detail and give them to you now. You either collect money or you sell what you know. That is it. Those are the only two things. You can't do anything else. It is not happening. That is the way it works. You can collect money as easy as you collect stamps. You can collect money as easy as you collect baseball cards. If you have a service that has a $9.99 membership, you're not making money, you're just creating a product and every month you just collect mm -hmm. money. In real estate, that is literally collecting money. Here's the funny thing about real estate. You flip the tables. People go to a job they can't stand for a boss they hate with people they can't stand in a car they can't stand. And they put on clothes they can't afford to get in a car they're still paying for and a house they're going to die paying for just to cut you a check and you do nothing. <laughs> that's, that's, so I just described to you the rat race and the person leveraging the rat race. So if you're in an apartment, that is happening to you right now. It's okay if you can control that. Make sense? That's collecting money. Selling what you know is specified knowledge. General knowledge would never let you be rich. Specified knowledge will. <clears throat> so if you're great at selling, you should sell that. If you're great at isometric stuff and stuff, you should sell that. Does that make sense? All that I don't, I don't understand what you do, but I don't get that. I can't sell that. He can't. Does that make sense? You sell what you know. Right. All right. So, law number one in money, the law of abundance. All of that was for me to disarm you to receive this objective information. What does objective mean? That means it is the truth, whether you like it or not. Does everyone believe in gravity? Mm -hmm. If I was to introduce to you the law of gravity right now, would you think it's new? No. It's just something that's always been around, you're not being educated on it. I'm introducing to you the laws of money. They've always been around, you're not being educated on it. This is not new. Nothing I'm gonna say for the next four hours is new. It's already been here. I am introducing it to you. If you climb on top of this hotel building and you jump off, if you are Christian, will you fall? Yes. 
Muslim, will you fall? What you want? <laughs> okay. So it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever you are, you're going to fall. It, it, you just going to fall. It's just, uh, but, but, but what if I'm rich? You're going to fall. I've got privilege. You're going to fall. A law is going to take over on you no matter what. Does that make sense? No matter what, a law is going to take over. Remind me on the next one. I forgot to put on the microphone. But yeah, but that's okay. We, we did, this is actually pretty good, so it's okay. All right. Now, the law will take hold of you. So the law of abundance says if you understand abundance, it must find you. If you stop believing in lack and you start believing in abundance, oh abundance God. must find you. How many of you are really waiting for abundance to knock down this door to you? And listen, in some cases, you literally wanted abundance and that's all you thought about. You were just like the leopard. You had to eat or you were going to starve. And you said, you know what? If it don't get done, it just sounds like you did, but I'm putting all my eggs in this one batch and it's going to happen. And guess what? It happened. And it didn't happen the way you thought it was going to happen, but it knocked down the doors just for you to get it. You've all had those moments, right? Because in that moment, you believed in abundance and nothing else. You needed it so bad that you couldn't think about the option of not getting it. So it showed up. When you believe in lack, it shows up. <clears throat> Lisa Nichols says in the movie The Secret, and I love that she says this, she says, think about how you look at your mailbox. If you go into your mailbox expecting the bill, your subconscious manifests the bill. It's not saying the bills wouldn't come in, but it can't let you be crazy because then the universe will stop being the way it works. So when you expect the bill, guess what you get? A bill. Do yourself a favor, expect a check. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> does that make sense? Oh. Now, no, every day. <laughs> now, watch this here. Look, look, look. <laughs> you understand? Now, now, I'm glad you did that. She's like, I'm going home every day. I'm getting checking my mailbox. Now, watch this here. Every day I get dropped off, <laughs> Deanna's back there, and I've got her condition. When you drop me off, what do you do? You drop me off at my driveway. T tell us what you do. Say it loud enough. Come on, come on camera. Come on, come on camera and do it. Come on, y'all clap for her. Y'all clap for her. She, she camera ready today. Come on. <laughs> so when I drop off my boss man, I pull in and I stop at the mailbox and I wait. And he goes and checks his mailbox. And then he either gets back in the car, he says, go ahead and pull up and I'll pull up. And sometimes I stop and he kind of sits there. I'm like, you don't check your mailbox for your check. <laughs> like, oh yeah. And so he gets out and checks his mailbox. And now tell him the dollar amount of my check. $30,000. All right. Come on, clap for that. <laughs> Every day I get home, Woo! I check my mailbox for a $30,000 check. Amen. Know <laughs> where it's coming from. I don't even think I've generated it. I don't even know. Don't but I fully <laughs> expect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that means somebody, I'm going to do a $30,000 speaking engagement oh, no. or this, whatever. It, 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 that's not my responsibility. How it happens has nothing to do with me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing to do with me. I just know there shall be a check for $30,000. Yeah. And until it get there, I'm going to keep on looking. Come on now. Now how many, yes, come on, you no, put your hands no, together. No, no, right? no. <laughs> <laughs> to the point now, I've conditioned her to do the same. So she is looking at me expect and it has to be changing her own personal life mm -hmm. because I'm fully expecting this $30,000 check. But you cannot expect something, write this down, that you think you don't deserve. Uh oh, oh absolutely. Say that again. You cannot expect something that you think you do not deserve. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I deserve a $30,000 check for no reason at all. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't, listen, please, please understand this much. I didn't say, give me this $30,000 check because I worked hard. Mm -hmm. I, no, 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 no. It's not what I said. I deserve it. I just expect a $30,000 check to show up in my mailbox. Period. Just without reason. Because I just feel like I'm worth mailbox money. That's just me. That's me. Just me personally. I just feel like I'm worth anonymous mailbox money. Does that make sense? How many of you feel the same way that Come you feel? Right. I'm worth 30000 I'm believing in 60000 Let me write this down. And I'm not mad at you. I can't. And right now, in my level of awareness, to expect a $30,000 check is very, very believable for me. 31000 may get out of my belief range. 
but I can believe realistically for thirty thousand dollars for no reason at all, and that's why I said that number. It's, it's, it's just an arbitrary number that I can believe in without my dominant thoughts kicking in and telling me, you know, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So be careful what you believe, and because the funny thing about money, money, and Jim Rohn says this. I'll say it in a different way, but money's real funny. If you don't grow out to it, it'll dwindle down to you. Uh oh. So if you get a million dollars, you better quickly become a millionaire. Yeah. Grow out to it. Because if you don't, that money will dwindle down to whatever you think you deserve. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Whatever you think you deserve, that million dollars will eventually find its way to your worth. Not part of this presentation, but I give it to you anyway. It's called the law of compensation. You would never get out of life a penny more than what you deserve. And this is a hard one to accept because whatever you have right now, that's exactly what you deserve. You can tell the quality of a neighborhood just by driving by. But in the quality, you can also turn, you can also tell the out the energy output of that neighborhood. So if you're driving by a very affluent, astute neighborhood, you can expect that the people in that neighborhood serve lots of people. Whether it be brain surgeons, whatever it may be, or stockbrokers, they serve lots of people. As the neighborhood dwindles down in what we call abundance, uh -huh. that's how many people that neighborhood serve. Does that make sense? So if your neighborhood is run down, you're not serving anybody but your boss. So you only get serving my boss type blessings. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you want to make a billion dollars, you better go out there and serve a billion people. Hmm. That's just the way it works. You need to create something that does that. So the law of abundance is very important. Understand that, that money can come your way. Law number two, inside of this money wealth type thing. It is the law of exchange. Right? That these are universal laws. I'm not joking. Law of exchange. What does that mean? That means everything that you have in your bank account right now, you had to exchange a service for it. Yep. That means that money cannot be created. It must be exchanged at a service. The only people who are creating money work in the mint or they're counterfeiting it. You can't make money you have to output energy to get it. You have to exchange a service to get it. Ask yourself, think about your dollar amount, ask yourself, what is my energy output? Because if you be real with yourself, it's your dollar output. Your energy output is also your dollar output. Okay. If you lack money, whether you want to admit it or not, besides the fact that you think that's what you deserve at this state of point, if you lack money, here's the ultimate truth behind that. You stop serving people. Hmm. That is the way it works. People are the only way to get money. It is the law of exchange. That is it. Unless you want, there's another way to make money. You can go counterfeit it and you can do that. Then there's risk for that. Or being a mint and make it, but that money's not for you. The only way to make money is to exchange a service for it. The higher the service, the higher the dollar amount. The more people you serve, the more the dollar amount. The less you serve, the less dollar amount. Now, let's reverse that whole thing on the other end of the spectrum so it can hit you where it hurts. Now, look at your dollar amount and understand that's how many people you serve. That's just the way it works. It's not... It's not personal. If you want more money, serve more people. Law number three, the law of capital. Something I love to say, money's the new oxygen. Let me, let me tell you something, kings and queens, let me, let me holler at you just for a second. Let me, let me tell you about this oxygen we call money. You need to start charging people I thought I had some more claps coming right there. With no discount. I thought I had some. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you why you don't charge people. Because you're saying secretly, but I really want you to like me. Now think about this for a second. 
this, 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 this think about this for a second. If I didn't like you, would you stop breathing? So if money is the new oxygen, why is you <laughs> suffocating yourself for people who are not your customer to like you? I'm trying to make this make some sense. Y'all running around here suffocating right now because you want people to like you. Let me tell you something. You've already given stuff away for free by providing your product. The, when you went in your room and had this idea and you hammered it down until it came into fruition and then you made it happen and then you made it happen again and before people ever saw it, when you did all that, when you did all that good stuff, right, all that good stuff, you literally sat down, oh, thank you, you sat down and you did all that for free. <clears throat> so why are you not charging people? Come on now. The free work happened in your prayer closet or whatever you want to call it. Charge the full price too. So you already did them a favor by creating your product. Somebody should receive so that. So I give right them a discount. <laughs> you, you know, friends don't ask for discounts. Come on, Reverend. Say that. Is <laughs> <That's good. laughs> friends do not ask for discounts. I'm serious. <laughs> Friends don't ask for no, <laughs> friends do no, not no. ask for discounts. <laughs> hey, hey man, I'm a in fact, in fact, came back there. I'm just a book. Hey man, I ain't gotta buy the book, man. I got some nah, man, I won't buy the book. <laughs> I had no choice in the matter. Yeah. He slipped me twenty dollars. So you can buy the book. So you can buy the book. Yeah. I think he overpaid for the book. He bought two of them. Come on, man. So he tipped me six dollars extra. Mm. Right, come on, clap for people who are tipping. <laughs> Friends don't ask for discounts. It's okay to give them, but then there's always a barter and trade when that happens. Does that make sense? You use my energy, I use your energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But friends, do not ask for discounts. If you have people in your life that always ask for discounts, get those people out your life. They not your friends. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Your Get those people out your life as fast as possible. They try to They're not the your friends. Yeah. They're not there. You got a conference coming up soon. I'm buying tickets. With no discount. I just spoke. In fact, I, I have to I have to leave here. I have to leave here and go keynote for some kids. And the lady never ever asked me to buy a ticket. And when she sealed the deal, I still spent $25 and bought a ticket. Because it doesn't matter what my money's coming from. What you're not gonna do is make me plant a bad seed. Come on, man. Cause see, I can't control you, but I can control my harvest. Mm -hmm. And the way there's two ways to control your harvest. Right? There's that. Watch what you plant and watch who planting in it. Come on now. Say a second one. Yes. Watch what you plant and watch who is planting in it. So the law of capital is very simple. The law of capital is super simple. You are getting paid for what you provide. And you need money. Yeah, I'm hungry. Stop letting religion tell you to be broke. Uh-oh. Stop letting your parents tell you to be broke. You can't be broke and prosperous. Can't be saved and poor. There's no such thing as a poor, righteous teacher. Those two words are oxymoronic. You can't be poor and righteous. To be righteous is to be overflowing. To have money is to also have great, healthy relationships. You can't be full of money and have friction in all your relationships. And you can't have great relationships but be poor. It's not the way it works. Prosperity is a wholeness thing. Your health and your wealth, and your wealth they're actually the same thing. Health and wealth, actually, health is wealth. Wealth is just a byproduct of health. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> that, that, that's just the way it is. I, I may be a big guy, but I can still run two miles flat in seven and a half minutes. Healthy. It's just, it's just the way it is. And so that's what we have to... Not seven and a half minutes. Seven and a half minute miles. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just thought about that. I just, I just thought about it myself. I went, wait a minute. No, no, no. Seven and a half. No, that's too fast. That's 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 Who's Olympic. No, no, that's not even. Boy, he wouldn't even run. Wait, well, I guess he could. I guess he could pull pull off a mile. But no, seven and a half minute miles. Excuse me, I'm tripping. 
<laughs> look, if, if they if they do that, I'm somebody draft me to the Olympics as fast as possible. Real I'm quick. good with that. Man, <laughs> seven minutes. What is that? Three and a half minute miles. It's like you run. Yeah, that's the word. So you just run. No, 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 no. That's that's too fast. So understand this law of capital. You need capital. You need capital. You need capital. Yeah. You need capital. You need capital. Am I beating that dead horse? You need capital. But I don't have no money. That's all right. Let me tell you how to be creatively capitalized. You got trees in your yard? I cut them down for you. You, <laughs> you find you a lumber company. You don't like them trees anyway. They ain't doing nothing but bringing spiders and roaches into your house. Oh, call me. Hey, how much for these trees? That is about $10,000 of wood to me. I'll give you seven for it. I'll take it. $7,000 of money you just sitting on. All of you right now, they're, they're teaching later on in this seminar, all of you have $5,000 of junk in your closet you can sell on eBay. So these ladies are going to get up here and tell you how to make $25,000 on online shipping stores. Come on, give these ladies a hand. They're going to give you that blueprint. Seriously, they're going to teach you how to make $25,000 from the junk in your closet. We've done it. And they're going to give it to you for free. I'm gonna give it to you. What they're, not gonna, they're not gonna hold. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm not gonna hold anything up. Now, the law. Fourth one. The law of time. Perspective. Law of time perspective. What does that mean? Law of time perspective says this here. That if you have a good perspective about time, you'll also have a good amount of money. You try to do all this as fast as possible, you'll get demotivated. Mm. Anybody ever felt that before? Mm -hmm. you, you, if you got if you go on the stock market trying to beat people whose computers are connected to the floor trading computer, that fraction of a second is always gonna cost you money. If you try to compete with day traders, you're always gonna lose. But if you ride the long term market, you'll win every time. Every time, every time, every market has a boom and a bust or a boom and a bull, every single time. If you ride the real estate market, if you ride the real estate market, you're gonna go down, it's gonna go back up. Time, perspective, you need to have a good perspective of time. One of the, one great um, book, you call it religion, one great book says that the race is not given to the swift. You, you, you can't always be in here to sprint. Yeah. If you want to run eight miles, you can't sprint that. Yeah, pace you, you can't. If you get out there and try to run two miles in a three and a half minute pace, if you want to, you're gonna stop at a way before a quarter mile. You're gonna burn out. Does that make sense? And, and, and here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy about this understanding of this. And I know people are like, yeah, that makes sense, but you don't do it. It took you 37 years to get in your financial problems, and you won't out in 37 minutes. It's just, it's just, it's just not rational. It's just, it's just, it's, it's not, pra I, I like practicality. I am the most practical person I know. I'm never romantic about anything. If seminars, if seminars start work, stop working, I'll stop doing them. If, if public speaking stops working, I'll stop doing it. Whatever's working, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to redefine how it works. If internet stops working, nobody likes it no more. I won't be on the internet. Yeah, I will still be on there. There's a, there's, there's this guy. His name was Elijah. He was sitting by this brook that dried up. And in this book that brook that dried up, most people would have just been sipping teaspoons of water, waiting, because the brook was there for three years. It's an overflow. And he was getting fed meat by mouth and some birds and stuff. He was getting all that good stuff. And then the brook dried up. And when the brook dried up, he left and got more than what he had because he left what was blessing him. Stop being romantic about things. If it dries up, move on. Right? Stop keeping stuff. Stop keeping ideas in your repertoire, in your store, in your business that no longer work because you like them. Your customers don't. You find this very, pre uh, very prevalent in religious establishments. They're still doing methods 
that worked three generations ago. And they wonder why their their places are declining. Because we don't want to hear them songs no more. Well, it's, it's like the old dirty couch. <laughs> yes, the couch is beautiful. Yes, your grandmother sat on it. Yes, your mother sat on it. Yes, your baby threw up there. But we only see stains. You see memories. How many of you are doing your businesses that way? How many of you are operating off of outdated models? Because this is what you know. If it's not working, change it. But you can only do that when you have a good perspective of time. Time changes and so should you. And sometimes things take time. And you can't rush a harvest. Let me tell you something about harvest. When you put that seed into the ground, you can't control when it comes up. You can't control when it comes up. That's right. And, and here's what's even crazy about that. When it finally does come up, write this down, very important. I had to get over this one myself. All your harvests don't come at the same time. Come on now. Yeah. I don't know if it ain't grown yet. So when you start saying things like, man, I thought this was going to work, but this is all I have? <laughs> if you wait a little bit, the rest of the oranges will bloom. Just give it time. Now let me tell you something about abundance. Let me tell you how abundance is supposed to work. Has anyone ever eaten every orange that fell off an orange tree? Yeah, that's the way abundance works. Abundance works and you can get all you want and then you have to share it. It was meant to be shared. You must do it. If not, you'll be in violation of these laws, which I'll go back to a little bit. Law number five, the law of saving. Woo! Write this one down, the law of saving. Yeah. It says when you start saving money, money will start finding you so you can save more of it. Most of you don't have money because you haven't saved. Yep. Here's how most people save money. Think of it as a pie. Okay, think of it as a pie. Right? In fact, it's about to be Thanksgiving time. Who's, who's, who's going to have to join Harold Jackson's Heavenly Bodies Gym to run off them pounds you're going to get? That's, oh, yeah. That's, okay, all right. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, think about it as a pie. This is how most of you save money. This is the wrong way. You have this pie. It's 100%. You take a big slice of it for your rent. You take a big slice of it for your, for your, your car. But, of course, we know Another slice is coming for the car insurance. I wish I had somebody. You understand? Okay. Okay. You understand? And with the house, now you got to take another slice for all the utilities in the house. But then, you know, baby like the internet. You got to take another slice for the internet. You understand? Then you got them credit cards. You understand? You got to take another slice for that. And after that, you say, well, we need gas money. Another slice for that. And then, as a common sense creature, you go, you know, I'm not going to spend all my money and I do something for me. And you go get at least a cheeseburger, hopefully not a cheeseburger, but you get something that says, this is for me. Not a big purchase, but you say, I'm going to at least get my pack of cigarettes. You, 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 you understand. I'm, try, I'm trying to hit everybody. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying to hit everybody. Everybody, I know everybody don't smoke, but we all, right on this section, right over her, we got some smokers. <laughs> right. All right. Or some wine. Okay. If I give you the you say, you say, look, I'm going to get at least $10.99 for this bottle of wine. I'm going to do that much. You understand? Then, after you do all that, you finally say, let me save. Oh, no. <laughs> I got 35 cents. No, let me save. Exactly. Exactly. Cents. So you, and here's what you do. I'm putting a bigger bank. Yeah. Here's what you do. By that time. <laughs> You, you know how we put the little pie in the silver tray. Yeah. By that time, you're looking at the pie, you got this little sliver left of these crumbs. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to say, I'm gonna say this to and you. just looking at the slice of pie disgusts you. Most of you feel that way about saving. Yeah. Every single time that you try to save, you get disgusted by it. You say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to the bank and put $2 in there. I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to disrespect myself like that. <laughs> am, am I lying? Am I, am, I, am, I, am I lying? I mean, I'm trying to get, I do this for a living. So I'm just not going to do that. You understand? I'm just, I'm just not going to do that. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not, I got a check for one of my books for $9. The book came out three years ago and it's, it's I've since republished the book. So now I own the entire thing. But I'm still getting paid from the original publisher. And 
a couple of months ago, it was like an $800 check, which is crazy. The book is three years ago. Yesterday, it was a $9.73 check for whatever quarter of month, however they paid me. I, I, I didn't even look at it. It was the greatest check of my life. Let me just say, I looked at the check and I said, $9.73. Huh, I wouldn't even expect that coming. Step one. And I looked at the check and I said, Nine dollars seventy three cents. They got me messed up. Ah, shut up, you. <laughs> step two. Okay, you, you, you understand. You already gonna have that balance. You understand what I'm saying, right? That's step two. Then I said, well, I can't tell you the word I said, but I wish. <laughs> I'm gonna cash this check. You understand? You you can put whatever word that went right there. And I pulled out my little phone and I took a picture of it. Then I wrote my bank account and the number on the back and I signed it. And I it is off in digital world being deposited right now as we speak. Mm. Please know. All nine dollars and seventy three cent belong to me. <laughs> Does that make sense? But when you have, when you when you when you save your money that way, you look at that nine dollars. I'm not. I'm not finna. I ain't finna cash this check. How many of you done that before? I'm putting a not finna, not finna disrespect me with this. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, and that's a, so. Here's how you need to save ten percent first. How dare Capital One be worth more than you? Uh -huh. I'm not saying don't pay your bills. I'm saying when you pay yourself first, not only are you being a good steward of what gardening and farming is, not only will you attract the law that says I'll give you more to save, but then you'll teach yourself not to eat all the kids of your harvest. Does that make sense? Now, when you save 10% first, 10% first, you teach yourself to live off 90%. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Now here's the way I prefer you to spend your money. Everybody write this down. 10, 10, 10, 70. That's how I prefer you to spend your money. 10, 10, 10, 70. That's 10% of your income to some charity or church, it's up to you. 10% mm -hmm. of your income to yourself. 10% of your income to your debt. Stop right there. Let's talk about it. Stop cleaning up your debt. Putting yourself being broke and your credit always that's already messed up. Yeah. I'm just I'm giving you sound financial advice. Let me just tell you. You ain't gotta like it. I'm just telling you. You gotta keep your word. You gotta pay. But hey, listen, 10% is what I have. This is what you're gonna get this month. Yeah, I have. Well, I understand. But this is what you're gonna get this month. Do it enough, they're going to get paid off in full. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be their friend again. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? If it don't make sense, George S. Classen wrote a book called Richest Man in Babylon. I got it from that very book. Okay? Makes sense? All right. Now, 70% goes to your expenses. That means live off of 70% of what you earn. Not 110% like most people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> most people live off 110% of what they earn. That's why they always 10% broke. And they literally have, they have a great way for you to do this. They let you borrow. Hmm. So it don't feel like you broke. And then you start saying crazy things like, well, I'm going to refine that. For what? <laughs> you already broke. You trying to think, you only think about lowering your monthly payments, but you just extended that another three, four years in interest. You buy a $17,000 car, $17, car, you pay $31,000 for it. That's not saying ever. This is why you need to watch how you're spending your money. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Law right, number six. The law of conservation. Okay. Let me do a little quick time check. Oh, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. All right. So, the law of conservation. Who wants to guess what the law of conservation? Anybody heard that? Who knows what conservation means? Conserve it and then hold on to it. Interesting. Okay. Good. Good. There's a law behind that? Yes. <laughs> it means it ain't about what you make, it's about what you keep. <laughs> Makes sense? It's not about what you make, it's what you keep. That means you can make all the money. How, how many of you, just like me, make lots of money? Hmm. And then you, you understand. I spent my whole military career. Full of money. I ain't got nothing to show for it. 
Oh yeah, I, that, <laughs> I, 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 ain't show, I ain't got nothing to show. All they make it All thing I got to show for it is a skill set that I can't really use while I get into trouble. Does that make sense? If you don't know what I start, I was kind of intelligent for the army, so you don't really want me to use my skill set. <laughs> now I can't sell it, but that'll put me out of a path that I really want to go down. Does that make sense? Law of conservation. That means what you do is you get your money and you save it. But don't just save it. Let me teach you how to save your money and give you some things that you can use and some tools that you can use to do so. Okay? This is about 854. Is that about the time it is? That's good. <coughs> I looked it. Okay, good. That's why I looked at my phone. Great. Now, saving money will never get you rich. I know that that kicks at your sensibilities. It's not that world no more. It's not. This is not your grandmother's world. Inflation didn't eat up your grandmother's savings. It's eating up yours. If you have a dollar in your pocket right now, you don't have a dollar. You don't. Inflation took care of that. It's a wrap. You don't have a dollar. You got something like 96 cents. You know? And that's being nice. You don't have a dollar. But then, since you live in a capitalistic, governmental country, whatever your state tax is, you can snatch that out that dollar too. That's when you make it. Then we charge it when you spend it too. You do understand you get taxes twice. When you make it and when you spend it. Then you take this dollar really down about 75 cents. That, that, that's, that's fair. And if you put your bills in there, you take this dollar to about 15 cents, <laughs> depending on how you spend it. And, but I know that sounds funny. I don't even think about that, but don't it really feel that way at the end of the month? As soon as you get that money, it's already accounted for. And we got to get out of that. So here's how you get out of that. Here's how you get out of getting your money and get accounted for. Start investing. There's a couple of great, great ways to invest, but let's talk about the market first. Let's talk, let's talk about the stock market first. The stock market goes up about 7% annually. That's pretty good. That's, that, that's, so if you're getting 7% annually, that's a good, that, that's pretty good. If you're making, if you're in a deal that makes 100% return on investment, watch it. That's, that's not a realistic return. It's possible. If you invest in some good startup or something like that, it, it's many different ways to do that. But if you're with your friends, they say, man, listen, man, we're going to get this. And then we're gonna put a give me a hundred and I'm gonna give you back ten thousand. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Is we talking to Escobar? What's going on here? You, you understand. You, you gotta you have to watch unrealistic expect, expectations and unrealistic returns. So while investing, stay away from unrealistic returns. Stay away from trying to make your money back the same day. Play the long-term game. Be rational, even in your business. Humanize your businesses so you can play the long-term games. Don't just let your brand be a brand. Let your brand create emotional responses that are positive. So when people think about your brand, they feel good. Here's a free tip. If they like you, they'll follow you. If they trust you, they'll buy from you. So in saving or investing, you want to put your investment in some sort of vehicle. There's a couple of vehicles. Real estate is one vehicle, great vehicle, super great vehicle. If you want to know about real estate, maybe I picked it up in part two, but it is a great vehicle. Stock market is a vehicle. Real estate is a great vehicle because you can actually put insurance on your money. It's called house insurance. You burn down a $200,000 house, oh, you, you get you a $200,000 check, you know, less expenses. That's like money insurance. That's great. You lose $200,000 in the stock market, let's throw you a keg party because you feel really bad. Do you understand? <laughs> There's no insurance on that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is the way it works. Okay. Now, here's a couple of apps you can use. Before you start investing, start tracking your money. Acorns. Acorns. Yes. Acorns. Well, let's, let me, okay, so let's, let's, let's so I, I mentioned Acorns by accident. So let's go. Acorns, Betterment, these are great investing apps. I'm giving you the conserv. I am giving you the conservative of the conservative. Okay, that means these have low interest fees and low low interest rates. Not interest rates, low fees to transact your money, and they're low risk. So I'm giving you the conservative of the low risk, as not to get sued by your lawyer. Okay. Acorns 
Better Man. Stash. Stash? I've never heard of Stash. Oh, Stash is awesome. Okay, he said Stash is awesome. So write down Stash. I personally use Acorn, Better Man, Vanguard. I personally use these three. <coughs> Vanguard is, yeah. I, you, Acorns let you spare, invest your spare change. Better Man when invest you, you know, to so start being a stock investor at $10. You want to buy whole shares, you buy a fraction of shares. That's okay. You're starting. You're also learning how to save 10%. Make sense? If the market is incredibly high and everybody's excited about it, and don't put your money in the market. Put it in the savings. Let it crash. It's about to crash. And then, not I'm not talking about the general market about to crash. I'm saying if you buy a share that's $1,000 a share, <clears throat> let's not do that one right now. You understand? Let's let it drop to 600 So when you buy it for 600 and it goes up 1000 you just made $400. Buy low, sell high. That's the way it works. Real estate. I'm sorry. Let me let me back before I get to real estate. What's the name of the app that I, I let you all have to track your money? Mint. Mint. That's what I was trying to say. Mint. Mint. They're both green. So mint is black and green, and Acorn is all green. M I N T. Before you invest your money, track your money. If you don't know where your money is going, your money will always flee from you. Mint will also, every 60 days, give you a free credit score. Every 60 days, Mint will give you your free credit score. Mint, remember how your, 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 your grandmother used to get the ledger, the little green book with the little lines? You, you understand, she did that, or she had to double check books. To, you know, you understand, the, the duplicate check. Yeah, you understand. She balanced in that checkbook. Oh, yeah, Mint yeah, yeah. does all this for you digitally. As you sync oh. your cards, as you sync your your debit cards or credit cards, or whatever, or you, all that, it lets you on, online bill pay too. It'll categorize it for you. Oh, it I notices. Mean, oh yes, yes, you need mint as fast as possible. <laughs> yes. It says, oh, you bought food, and it'll put it in the food category yes. for you. Then it will budget your food, mm -hmm. and mint is wonderful. This is free. I don't make money for that. I don't. I'm, I'm, I, how much I don't have. Money. I'm not giving you like. Hey, everybody go to mint.com slash and tell them to you. I, I don't have that. I just have it. I, listen, I'm not making money for this. I wish. As many people out there refer to the mint, I need to do it, seriously. But no, they're, 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 they do it to me all the time. I go, give me some wine. I do. Don't, don't, don't judge me. I go, give me some wine. And then, and then what happens is, I don't know. I'm tired of that. Give me another bottle. I have no problem. Mint has no problem with that. I give me that third. Mint say, wait a minute. You're doing too much. Your Yo, liquor. Expense. It's all it is. It's over the limit now. Oh, I need that. It, it, it literally. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. <laughs> you want to be a good one? You're fine. I need that. <laughs> you want to be a good one? This is. Mint will literally tell you, wait a minute. But, look, but then it also lets you raise it up a little bit. I had to raise my little wine budget up just a little bit. You understand. I'm, 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 I'm just blaming it on my pounds. I got more water in me. <laughs> <laughs> Biological joke. Biological joke. But yeah, Mint will literally track all your finances. So when you go to the movies, when you go to Redbox, it files those in movies for you. When you go out to the movies, and it'll tell you your behavior. Child care. And it will let you know your spending, and it, and it get to red. You'll be like, hey, I shouldn't do that no more. And you'll stop doing that. And you'll also see how much you spend on fast food, and you'll stop doing that. You should be eating fast food anyway. I digress. I, I get off that soapbox. But I'm talking. I'm talking. Talk about yourself, sir. Sorry. Sorry. Worry about yourself. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know. Not. Yeah, I want. You, like I want all my calories in abundance. You, know? you just said the law of abundance. Come Give on, me my brother. calories in yes. abundance. Let yes. my weight be abundantly fit. I know. I know. Please. <laughs> well, okay. He, he tired of being skinny. Like, he, yes. He's been trying. He just gained ten pounds. He think he more his chest than not. Yes. That's all right. That's all right. Weight. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. His wife like it, so that's good. That's good. That's, that's all I did at that. <laughs> okay. Mint is a great tool for you to have all your stuff tracked. Because if you can track it, anything you can account for, you can control. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. The moment you account for something, you also can control it. If you account for something and you do nothing about it, you're controlling it. You're keeping yourself in poverty. Make sense? All right, so those are some good tools that you can use. Now, that is, let's see if we can do this in order. Law of abundance, 
law of exchange, law of cap capital, mm -hmm. law of time perspective, mm -hmm. law of saving, mm -hmm. law of conservation, and I'm going to save the next ones. All right, is that, did that work for you? Was that helpful? Yes. All right, come on, let's put our hands together. Come back and talk, yeah. Play some music. Hi, my name is Tempest S. Smith. I am one of the CEOs of this amazing ATSJR companies. We are the top personal development training company in the world. We make profitable clients more profitable. If you or your business needs help, if you and your life needs help, this is the only place you need to be. ATSJR Companies, check us out online, theatsjr.com or atsbu.org. Because we are unstoppable. Listen, man, your life will always never be the same once you become part of the ATSJR Companies. Listen, ATS Week, it's going to bless your life. It's going to transform. It's going to change your life. But here's what you got to do. You got to drop that old mindset. Let go of that old poverty stinker. Let go of that old person. Let go of that loser. Release him. Let go of the procrastinator. Kill all that. Become the new you by transforming into who you are trying to become. Join us, ATS Week, ATSJR.com. We are excited. We are ready to have you guys. If you guys don't know by now, I am the double certified people's pastor, Reverend Brian A. Johnson. And I am the spiritual transformational coach right here at the ATSJR companies. We will change your life. And we will change your bank account. Let us add value to your life. Let us give you everything that you need to go to the next level in your life. ATSJR Companies and the ATS Business University, that's what we're all about. We're all about growth. We're all about adding value to you. And we're all about helping you grow. Trust me, you don't want to miss ATS Week. This is the place to be. This is the place to grow. This is the place to learn. My business partner, Antonio T. Smith Jr., is the best at everything that he does. You need help, you need to holler at my boy. Your business is broke, you need to holler at my boy. Your, <laughs> your, your mindset is in poverty, you need to holler at my boy. Why? Not because he's arrogant, not because he's whatever y'all talk about, because he backs up what he teaches. He lives this lifestyle. He's not out here just talking to collect coins. He's living and walking it every single day. So you need help. Your business needs help. Your life needs help. Come holler at my boy. Man, many people say what they're trying to do. Many people say what they want to do. Many people say what they have a desire to do. But few people actually go do it. If you want to learn how to do it, listen to Antonio T. Smith Jr. Follow ATS Week. Follow the ATS Business University. Go join a plant better group. Get on a plant better cause because your life will never be the same planting the old bad sucky seeds that you've been planting since you were born. So you have to plant better in order to get better. And if you want to be better, you have to begin right here at the ATS Business University. In the words of Tempest, you want to be better? Go holla at my boy. Get rid of the old model of living that you used to have and follow the new model of living. Let me explain to you why. Because your old model was based on what people told you to do. The new model is based on what your desire is. Stop letting your dreams collect dust. Stop letting your life be lifeless. Come see the ATS Business University. Come join us at the ATS JR Companies. Come join us at the Plant Better University and create a better model for your life so you can start living instead of living a life of mediocrity. Come join us. She said it best. Holla at my boy. <laughs> there is no company better than this company. Not because I'm one of the CEOs, not because I've been here since day one, but because we put in work every single day. Antonio is in this office 17, 18, 19, 20 hours a day. Not for him, but because he wants to help you yeah. change your life. That's it. Yes. That's it. Yes. You it. Listen, man, listen. I want to tell y'all something real quick, a real, a real quick story. And that was this kid that grew up, this kid grew up in the poverty area. He grew up in the hood. And he, he was raised up in the hood. And he had hood mentality. And all his life, they used to tell a kid, you wouldn't amount to nothing. You wouldn't be nobody. You will never accomplish anything you want to be. You will never get to the level of success in which you are dreaming about. So get rid of your dreams and just continue to live in that hood life. Continue to live that poverty lifestyle. Well, baby, guess what? I'm a millionaire now. You know why? ATS Business University. Uh, 
Listen, join us today. Walk out of your poverty. Mm. Walk into your prosperity. And you can make all the haters yeah, yeah. pissed off. That's it. Because you are filthy freaking rich. Woo! Woo! Yes. Yes. ATS, baby. Yes. Get you one. And allow yourself to feel and be and exist without fear, without um, hesitation, without nervousness. Just be that seems, like I said, sounds crazy to some, but it really helps. Whatever is happening in your body, let it happen. If your breasts are shaky, if they're shallow, let them be. Just enjoy the moment because that helps release that fear, lets you move forward with your day, and lets you have a better life. So if you're fearful like me, one, you can leave comments or you can inbox me if you're suffering from something. But know that it doesn't have to control you. Know that it doesn't have to mold you. Know that it's just something that you can overcome. Fear is not the end of your life. It is not who you are. It's just something that we all experience. And it's okay. But don't um, don't allow it to do what it did to me and put you in a self-made prison because you're fearful of letting go. So I hope this video has helped. Thank you as always for checking me out. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for hanging out with us. And I'll see you next time. Hi, my name is Tempest S. Smith. I am one of the CEOs of this amazing ATSJR companies. We are the top personal development training company in the world. We make profitable clients more profitable. If you or your business needs help, if you and your life needs help, this is the only place you need to be. ATSJR Companies, check us out online, theatsjr.com or atsbu.org. Because we are unstoppable. Listen, man, your life will always never be the same once you become part of the ATSJR Companies. Listen, ATS Week, it's going to bless your life. It's going to transform. It's going to change your life. But here's what you got to do. You got to drop that old mindset. Let go of that old poverty stinker. Let go of that old person. Let go of that loser. Release him. Let go of the procrastinator. Kill all that. Become the new you by transforming into who you are trying to become. Join us, ATS Week, ATSJR.com. We are excited. We are ready to have you guys. If you guys don't know by now, I am the double certified people's pastor, Reverend Brian A. Johnson. And I am the spiritual transformational coach right here at the ATSJR companies. We will change your life. And we will change your bank account. Let us add value to your life. Let us give you everything that you need to go to the next level in your life. ATSJR Companies and the ATS Business University, that's what we're all about. We're all about growth. We're all about adding value to you. And we're all about helping you grow. Trust me, you don't want to miss ATS Week. This is the place to be. This is the place to grow. This is the place to learn. My business partner, Antonio T. Smith Jr., is the best at everything that he does. You need help, you need to holler at my boy. Your business is broke, you need to holler at my boy. Your, <laughs> your, pop, your mindset is in poverty, you need to holler at my boy. Why? Not because he's arrogant, not because he's whatever y'all talk about, because he backs up what he teaches. He lives this lifestyle. He's not out here just talking to collect coins. He's living and walking it every single day. So you need help. Your business needs help. Your life needs help. Come holler at my boy. Man, many people say what they're trying to do. Many people say what they want to do. Many people say what they have a desire to do. But few people actually go do it. If you want to learn how to do it, Listen to Antonio T. Smith Jr. Follow ATS Week. Follow the ATS Business University. Go join a plant better group. Get on a plant better cause because your life will never be the same planting the old bad sucky seeds that you've been planting since you were born. So you have to plant better in order to get better. And if you want to be better, you have to begin right here at the ATS Business University. In the words of Tempest, you want to be better? Go holler at my boy. 
get rid of the old model of living that you used to have and follow the new model of living. Let me explain to you why. Because your old model was based on what people told you to do. The new model is based on what your desire is. Stop letting your dreams collect dust. Stop letting your life be lifeless. Yeah. Come see the ATS Business University. Come join us at the ATS JR Companies. Come join us at the Plant Better University and create a better model for your life so you can start living instead of living a life of mediocrity. Come join us. She said it best. Holla at my boy. <laughs> there is no company better than this company. Not because I'm one of the CEOs, not because I've been here since day one, but because we put in work every single day. Antonio is in this office 17, 18, 19, 20 hours a day. Not for him, but because he wants to help you yeah. change your life. That's it. Yes. That's it. Yes. Listen, man, listen. I want to tell y'all something real quick, a real, a real quick story. And that was this kid that grew up, this kid grew up in a poverty area. He grew up in the hood. And he, he was raised up in the hood. And he had hood mentality. And all his life, they used to tell a kid, you wouldn't amount to nothing. You wouldn't be nobody. You'll never accomplish anything you want to be. You'll never get to the level of success in which you are dreaming about. So get rid of your dreams and just continue to live in that hood life. Continue to live that policy lifestyle. Well, baby, guess what? I'm a millionaire now. You know why? ATS Business University. Uh, Listen, join us today. Walk out of your poverty. Mm. Walk into your prosperity. And you can make all the haters yeah, yeah. pissed off. That's it. Because you are filthy freaking rich. Woo! Woo! Yes. ATS, baby. Yes. Get you one. So, and welcome back to Making Money Fast with Grace Sandals. We are on way number four to make money fast. Sell your gold and silver. Yes, sell your gold and silver. You know you have a lot of things laying around the house that you don't wear anymore. Jewelry or other items that you have that are made of gold, made of gold and silver. Here are a few examples. Now this first one I just saw on the internet and I was like, maybe if they're not married anymore, but they say wedding and engagement rings because they're made of gold. You know, again, maybe if you're not married anymore and you don't want those things, you can sell those items. Class rings, I have one. I will not sell this, but you can if you would like. Necklaces, a lot of times we have gold and silver necklaces. Miscellaneous jewelry, bracelets, anklets, different types of things like that. Also, I wouldn't recommend this either, but they said tooth fillings that have fallen out. I'm assuming like gold teeth that you don't wear anymore. I don't know if I'd sell that, but it was an example on the list. <laughs> it was, it really was. Bullion bars or rounds. These are gold coins that you, that you see, and the bars are also gold. Silverware that you have around the house, old serving dishes, you know those things are made of silver. And pre-1965 quarters and dimes. Any quarters or dimes that you have that were before 1965 may be worth some money. How to sell your gold or silver items. Take your items to a precious metals buyer or a coin shop. Most times, many of those uh, companies will test your items, gold or silver content right then and there and offer you a price based on the amount of precious metal that's in your items. That's one way that you can sell your items. The second way is to sell it to a national buyer who advertises on TV and the internet. Here's how this works. They will send you either a mailing box or an envelope for you to put your items in to send back to them. After a few days, they'll make you an offer for your items. Now, if you decide to accept their offer, they'll send you a check. But if you decline their offer, they will happily return your jewelry to you, but the postage will be on you to pay for. Now, when avoiding problems, uh, to avoid problems when selling your items to those who advertise on TV or the internet, make sure you ask these three questions. Number one, how long do I have to make a decision on your offer? Let them answer that question for you. Question number two, how will I get my items back if I decline the offer? Question number two, how do I get my items back if I decline your offer? And question number three, what percent of milk value do you pay? When I say melt value, I mean the value of gold or silver that's in your item. 
If you ask, the, ask these three questions, you will avoid any problems when selling your gold or silver. Now, if the company hesitates to answer any one of those questions, happily decline, say thank you, and move on with your items in hand. Before sending your items to these companies, make sure you do your research of their, that company's reputation online. You want to make sure that you're not getting got for your things. You want to make sure that you're not going to get robbed <laughs> for your jewelry, your silver, your precious metals, your dishes, whatever uh, items that you are selling or that you are wanting to sell. You want to make sure that you don't get ripped off. This is another way to make money fast. If you have those types of items in your home, they have no sentimental value to you and they're just laying around, easy way to make money fast. We will see you at the top and not from the top.